everybody. So Travis with the mulching machine just finished and left and we're doing a walk around and I'm showing Tina and the kids what he did. For reference, that, that's the northeast corner of the property back there. And I'm standing right at the edge of the timber line that's over here. And one of the huge things that Travis was able to do for us is find an existing logging road that was in here and just needed to be thoroughly cleaned up to gain access to it. So Tina and the kids are seeing it for the first time too and I'll take you guys along. just walked from north to south and we're breaking out to the south section of the property so there's an established logging road that was put out put in years before we had it and it was completely hidden by brush and now it's restored and that is really exciting because that lets us more easily access these spots and continue the work of cleaning cleaning it up bring animals through here and we can just chip away at all these edges so really happy with that we'll we'll take you the rest of the way down the hill there's some spots that we've already mowed and hit with the animals and they're looking pretty good and then here's all New space we're reclaiming on the side of this hill. And another little bowl he opened up. You can see I already grass seeded behind him in some spots. Here's one of the spots that was mulched and then seeded in December. And here we are, first week of February. And I'm really happy to see grass seed coming up, even where it's very woody. I was curious if the grass seed wouldn't do as well on all the woody mulch and if it needed direct ground contact with soil, but it seems to have done well even in the mulch. So really happy about that because everything we're looking at here I would love to turn into nice grass pasture. This is another look at a spot that got a lot of work and then Jacob and I came in here after the machine was here and made some of these piles and I'm seeing more good germination. Here's a spot that was seeded only within the last week or two and it hasn't sprouted yet but I mean these are beautiful beautiful contact with the ground this will definitely sprout seeds but it just needs a little more time here's a good close-up look at what the machine got rid of for us and this is just really rough, unusable stuff. And, you know, the stuff that's left behind that the machine didn't get to, we'll end up doing it by hand, chipping away at it. But 
spots like this just really don't provide any value. You know, we can't graze sheep or goats or pigs on that. You know, that's not growing anything that we can turn into useful timber. It, it, it would hardly be useful for firewood. And it's just going to take some work to clean it up and make it nicer. And a lot of these spots that ended up in this condition, the by far the most likely thing that happened was that they were logged. And so somebody made some money on timber that was sitting here and then absolutely no investment in time or money was made to replant trees or put down grass seed or graze animals on it or mow it. So many different things you can do to stop it from growing back and looking like this. You know, and on time scales of Mother Nature, you would have to wait, you know, 50 years, 100 years for eventually, you know, that little oak tree hiding in there, if it gets big enough to start shading out some of this stuff and it dies back. But you're talking about waiting generations for change or waiting for a forest fire to come through. So, investing in something like that mulching machine is a realistic and economical way to start getting value off of these spots of the property that are just doing nothing for us. So I guess I'm kind of explaining a justification of what, why, because some people might look at this and think, oh, you've destroyed your property, what are you doing? But it's about kind of resetting to a blank slate so that we can do something better than that brushy junk. Looks like those turkeys like it. Right, I'm up here with Arya and James in what we call the upper meadow, kind of the northwest part of the property. And just a little bit of mulching happened up here. And I'll, I'll weave in some drone footage I took. Uh, the mulcher was only up here for a couple hours. And I'll walk over there and show you how it's looking. The grass ends is where it was just pure brush all the way along there. That's all really nice and cleaned up. I'm really curious. I might do an experiment where I don't grass seed back here simply because I see how much grass already exists nearby. And to me that probably means at some point in the last few hundred years that was all grass as well, but at some point kind of blackberry and other stuff took over. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bunch of native grass seed already in there waiting to sprout. So I'll wait at least a month and see if I see native grasses coming up. And if I don't see anything, then I'll come back and throw grass seed. But 
really gain some nice spots there and just so happy so happy with the result really happy with the work Travis did happy you know it's a significant investment those kind of machines aren't cheap but really happy with the result we got because we've been working out here for a few years I have a real strong sense for how many hours of labor this saved so there's already more work to do than I have time to do out here so being able to you know spend some money to save a whole lot of time is very much worthwhile for us so really pleased with that and if anyone's wondering if they should do some mulching and brush clearing projects hopefully this has explained why we did it and why we're really happy with it and you know time will tell you know fast forward a year two years five years where we're walking around right now should just be gorgeous with grass and nice trees so that's the state of the mulching project as far as other things the kids are doing really good we had their parent teacher conferences this it. week and both kids are doing really well academically and their teachers said they're very well behaved so we are super proud of them good job sweetie good job bud can I have a high five high five for being a good kid why are you hitting me with a stick I want a high five not a stick there you go now stick high five um, baby's doing great high five. she she walks instead of crawls pretty much all the time now right I feel like that's pretty recent and she's taking a nap right now and Tina's doing really awesome she's been working out more fitting it in when the baby naps so that's what they're doing and moving forward the big thing I want to get to next is building fence and then um, that'll make all this animal moving and stuff more efficient so that's the the next big project um, but Let's leave it there. Thanks for hanging with us. Anything you want to say, are you? Our weather's been crazy good for February in Western Oregon. We're getting 50 degree days. I saw possibly hitting 60 sometime in the next few days with a lot of sun. So we are will take it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We'll take it because the, the ground is plenty wet. This kind of sun and warm temperatures, that's I get excited about grass growing weather is what I get excited about. <laughs> Alright, thanks everybody. See ya. Did you make this mess over here, all this stuff? Oh, are we still playing with that? What do you got? What is it? Can I have it? Can I have one? Thank you. Wow. Easter jokes. What do you call ten rabbits marching backwards? A receding hairline. <laughs> I'm kind of familiar with those. <laughs> I'm sure you were. You're so nice. <laughs>